So, welcome everyone to Astro Philosophy Hour, Minute, Moment, Journey. Because I know it's not going to be one hour because this is a very simple subject and uh, this is nothing complicated. And this is based on horoscope matching. Kundali Milan, right? Wanting to know if your son, daughter are matched with this person and will they live a prosperous life. And the reason why I make this is because um, even when I write this on my website in my relationship option that I don't do horoscope matching, I don't do marriage consultation. But still people send me birth chart of their significant other, whomever they're in a relationship with and they ask like, okay, can you please tell me just this? I don't want to know about future relationship, but I just want to know, am I compatible with this person? And all I do is just, I simply just refund them. I'm like, did you read what I said in there? I don't do these things. So I'm just clarifying this here, why I don't do these things. So you don't, you know, send me like birth details of three, four different people so I can match them with you. The reason is this, okay? We do horoscope matching. We've all done it. I've wanted to do horoscope matching with whomever I was in a relationship uh, previously, but we, we think that we can outsmart this universe. We think we're like the most smartest thing by doing the horoscope matching, you know, all the people are here getting divorced. And here I am so smart being born in a Hindu culture or in a culture where astrology is so profound. And I'm going to go to an astrologer and we're going to do horoscope matching and then I'll find the right person. And you think you've outsmarted the universe? You have not. Universe is trillion times smarter, more intelligent than you. Why is that? See, here's the thing. With the or without horoscope matching, okay, you have people meeting each other. Okay, so don't think that horoscope matching, uh, something genius is happening where a person like an astrologer is able to bring you together with someone so you can marry them. Universe does that every day, every minute. Every minute somebody is meeting somebody and somebody's, uh, you know, having a romantic time, sexual time with somebody. And somebody's getting married. There's thousands of marriage around the world probably every day. Although I don't know the proper statistics. But universe does this for you. Okay. Universe is performing its duty with utmost consciousness. Universe is not unconscious. It's conscious. And this is why it's doing what it's doing. But what you fail to realize is what you do against the tide of the universe. And again, this is my personal beliefs. This is from learning from teachers and gurus that I've come across previously that have taught me a lot of things, you know, um, is that you can never outsmart the universe. See, here's the thing about horoscope matching. When you go for horoscope matching, first of all, you're trying to fall in love with someone, okay? You're trying to fall in love with someone after looking at some mathematical blueprint. And you think that's how you should love someone. Like, oh, is the foundation strong, this and that? Okay, now I love this. And that's not what love is. That's not how universe wants you to learn love. Because universe, let me tell you something. Universe is definitely is love. See, I'm going to go a little bit deeper here because I learned so many things from Eve Mendoza in Sedona. Just going to lunch, you know, just me, Dr. Pai and her and just being there for like a couple of hours and just talking things. I learned so much. It's, it's just like kind of like cracked me open a little bit. Like now I feel nauseated when I think about certain things because I'll take you back to my own father. Um, my father passed away in a hospital. Okay. My father passed away in a hospital, had a heart attack right there, but we all thought like, oh, he'll be fine. You know, he's in the hospital now. Doctor's going to do the surgery, whatever bypass, but he did. However, this whole time we think, well, my father must have been now reborn, uh, you know, somewhere. That, that's my, that's the whole notion, right? Born somewhere or he's in the Pitri Loka 
or he's in some other dimension some other planet and or he's just waiting to be reborn in the same family but you really have to understand that when you are not advanced enough to understand this universe to understand some of the rules and regulations of this universe and to learn the proper knowledge your soul spirit whatever the hell you call it i have no idea what these things are even to this day but it finds the nearest womb and it gets reborn and it keeps doing this okay so before i was born perhaps i died maybe 10 minutes before in somewhere near where my mother was about to give birth and the soul just boom quickly transferred into me so when you think about this so my father could be 15 years old okay could be watching my videos on youtube like huh this guy's this fella is interesting hmm astrology wow yeah i'm i got connected to this guy somehow but hey i love it and it's hard to fathom that you find the nearest womb now my father has his own family he has mother father aunts uncles completely separate from my own he's no longer connected to you know our lineage our family he's now separate gone and i may run into him i may have already ran into him maybe i'll run into him in the next 10 years he could be you know uh some person in front of a hot dog stand selling me hot dogs and i could just buy a hot dog and leave and here we are thinking that oh this hot dog person is there like i'm driving for my coffee in the morning and uh, i look on to the right side there's a lady standing at the bus stop i look at her for three four seconds i have no thoughts and i keep going what i do not realize and 99.999 percent people don't realize that that person that you just saw for three seconds could have been the most amazing lovable fulfilling relationship as a mother and a child that lady was like your greatest mother if you were to remember every single past life that particular lady sitting there for three seconds that you saw was the greatest mother experience you ever had yet now you're separate from that thing you're separate from that thing and you left it and this is why the maharishis the 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 most enlightened be people in this world who have not read the vedas or bhagavad gita or nothing they have just simply learned from the universe itself N know why you should just love everybody because the person that you love as your own no matter you know them or not could have been your greatest love in past life could have been your greatest spouse the love of your children uh you know your your father the best relationship you could have had with the father it could be a person who comes in your office angry as a customer yells at you and you're like who is this person yelling me get out of here or even nothing you just you just pass by someone you look at them for two seconds and that's it and you forget to love them because hey my thing is my wife and my children and my mother and father that those are the people i will die for those are the people that you know my whole world exists in and what we fail to realize okay is that we are a drop in the ocean and think of each individual drop having a aura an invisible aura thinking that it's separate from the entire ocean while it is part of the ocean it's just that it's stupid the drop is stupid it is sleeping it doesn't really know much so it doesn't realize that it's part of the entire ocean it's like for example you know you're growing a um, you're growing an apple tree and the tree is growing and it doesn't look nothing like apple right because you don't have the intelligence to understand that this is a tree that it has to slowly grow first and slowly the small little fruit will come out then they'll get bigger 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 then they'll be ripe and then you have that apple where you just look at something you're like oh what is this reject 
I want the apple. See this? These are my apple. This is my apple. My mother, my father, my three children, my brother and sister. These are the apples. While all the trees around you who have not grown into apple, you reject them because you don't know much about those things. You've never seen a tree without apple. But you don't know the process that everything is around you is an apple. And that's love. That's literally, that's why they say God is love. Universe is love. Even God woke up. Okay, these are, and, it's, and one of the most profound things Eve said, something about the dream uh, that I can't share was only for me. But um, this, in this universe, what we think of God, Vishnu, Brahma, it came into existence and it asked itself the same question. Who am I? Why am I here? What, what, what am I doing here? And from that, wanting to understand itself, the consciousness of this God, this universe, expanded because it wanted to experience itself in million and trillion different ways. From a rock, to fish, to a human, to a planet, to a galaxy, to a black hole. So now coming back to our matchmaking, okay? When you do matchmaking, first of all, if you believe in astrology, which I know you do because you love doing matchmaking, you don't realize that the person that the universe has already chosen for you to love, it has the biggest reason for you to be with that person. Why? Because, look, we are reborn, right? Because of our imprint of the past life karmas. Whatever our karmas are, depending upon that, we are born into a certain family. We have a certain mother. We have a certain father. Okay? Like I could be in Persia in my last life. I could be some beggar in Persia, but I did something that karmically made my structure in such a way that I had to be born with these two people, my parents. That's how life is. And when a universe is bringing you somebody is because it wants you to complete a certain incomplete imprint. You left something incomplete. You left something which was um, tangled up that you need to resolve with that particular soul because the consciousness itself wants to resolve things and understand more and more about life to trillions of beings. So when you get somebody, you know, you're, you're, you met somebody in college, you met somebody at a coffee shop at work, you guys fall in love with each other. Oh, I love you. But then you go to horoscope matching. You go to horoscope matching, the astrologer says, oh no. If you marry this person, you will lose your wealth. You will suffer from your father. And um, you will have pain in your knee for the rest of your life. And you reject this person. Okay, fine. I'm sorry, hun. I got to break up with you. I no longer love you. Why? Because I just did my horoscope matching with you. So, yeah, that love, it's good. You're gone. While you don't realize that that was the biggest sin you created. Why? Because now the universe wants you to complete certain things. You can't go above and beyond some things until you complete certain missions. Certain karmic patterns that must be completed from past life. So what the universe is going to do is going to bring that person back probably five life lifetimes from now. 10 lifetimes from now for you to again complete. And again, if you go to an astrologer, it'll keep going that. And this is where that small free will comes into play. That option to either reject something now or uh, um, and get it later or just do it now and complete it and be done with. Most people don't get that because we have such limited in our early days. In India, there's such, such limited information and knowledge of astrology. People just think astrology is their Rashi, their moon sign. Even at least in India, they know their moon sign and nakshatra is it. And the score of the Kundali is everything. The Kutta system is everything. Matching the Yoni, okay, great, good. And this is the biggest sin that even um, parents create. Parents go to astrologers. My child is this. Is this a horoscope good match? Who are you to decide that what their karma should be in this life? You're not universe. You're part of the universe, but you are not the ultimate source. 
You don't know what their karmic imprints are that they need to complete with this person. Whether they suffer through this person or they flourish with this person. And most of the time when you go to astrologers, most astrologers are not well versed in horoscope matching. They learn the basics and they say, okay, oh, Shani is in, Saturn is in the seventh house. Her, this is in the seventh house. No, no way. Well, they don't realize that that particular degree that Saturn was in for that other person was going to actually help them excel. Saturn was debilitated, right, in Aries, in their seventh house. But Saturn, let's say, was in the third, uh, was in the third padha of, let's say, Bharani Nakshatra. Perhaps was in the 10th Padha of, uh, or not 10th Padha, I'm sorry, the uh, 10th Padha of the Aries sign itself. You don't know that. I mean, so as soon as they see, they're rejected. But even then, even if you know, you know, horoscope matching to the depth of, you know, the, to the core of itself, still, you cannot make a decision what the universe has decided for this person. This is why love needs to come first. And most people asking me, so did you do horoscope matching with your spouse? No, I didn't. I couldn't care less what our score was. Couldn't care less where her Venus is or where her Navam, how her Navamsha is. I'm like, this is, the, I just felt it, right? When I saw my wife in the, the first date, the first date, the first two hours, I did, the decision was made from her and me that, yeah, we're going to end up with, together. And that's it. That was the most beautiful matchmaking that I did. But you don't realize that when you do matchmaking, first of all, you don't love that person. Okay, number one. If you do matchmaking and then you love someone, that, that's a very superficial love because you only want something from them. You only married them secretly because the horoscope matched and the astrologer said, you married this girl, she's going to bring great wealth in your life. Oh my God, and suddenly the love comes. Oh, I love this woman, I'll die for her. And you would die for her. Why? Because she's bringing you something. The minute... Because of her horoscope, you start suffering. Then you get that wandering eye. Hmm. Could there be someone else? And I can show you, especially I was talking to uh, a while back, one of my cousins in India who has been married since 1991. 19, 1990, 1991. Wait, no, no, no. Yeah, 1990. They've been married. And I asked them, uh, you know, so... Uh, who did you guys do the horoscope matching with and this and that because man you guys are in love after this many years having two kids it seems like you guys are still in love it's like no we never did I just met her through arranged marriage but once I spoke to her for 10 minutes I knew this was the person and we never did any horoscope matching nothing I'm like that's beautiful that is beautiful so don't think that you're not going to find the perfect person in life without horoscope matching because if you're destined to find them, you will find them. And like I said earlier in, my video, in this video, that if your 7th house, 4th house, Venus and Jupiter are well placed, especially in Navamsha chart, there's no need to do horoscope matching because you are supposed to run into somebody who will give you a great life. But if you figure out that, okay, I don't have the right houses, then you can have the person with the best horoscope. Somehow, somewhere you will still feel like you're suffering. And you should cherish that. You should cherish that suffering because you're paying your debts off from past life. That's the number one thing. And number two thing you got to realize, you're not here for thousands of years. Okay, you're not here for thousands of years. I'm not here for thousands of years. I could drop dead in the next five years, 10 years, 15 years. It's that short. Life is that short. I hear things all day on the internet. This person was shot and they were killed at 22. And this Chinese uh, stunt guy on Instagram fell from 60 stories, 26 years old, just to prove some Instagram stunt. Just to get some likes, risked his life and for fame, he lost his life. That's how short life is. You are going to drop dead. You are going to be either buried or cremated. That's it. And, and when you look at how short that time is, 
who cares if you're suffering a little bit from your husband or spouse screaming at you or you know not giving you the love that you want it's it's actually like a sweet bittersweet fruit it's like that spicy you know uh, chutney you know you don't like eating it but you just love it you know think of your karmas like that so when you run for horoscope matching you're not doing anything smart you're not doing anything intelligent in my opinion and this is my opinion there's no like law book written on horoscope matching and from the person that i learned this from i don't want to drag their name into it because then people will start messaging them and asking them oh why did you say this but you know i learned some of the most valuable lessons in the last uh six years the last six years and especially um uh one of my main teachers and gurus kavindra rishis jeffrey armstrong taught me about you know, not that this horoscope matching thing, but he taught me about how a astrologer needs to be a paralegal, not the attorney in the karmic trial of the person. The attorney are the planets. You're just a paralegal. You're just here to take care of the paperwork. So don't go beyond what you're not supposed to. Don't try to play God with every single person. Because you have to be honest with yourself. How well do you know horoscope matching? Horoscope matching is such a science that three books like Bhirat Parashtra Hora Shastra can be written on it. And still a person will have to do more research as to what needs to happen. But whatever happens, this is why it's so important to go beyond just your regular life of you know, getting a job, getting a promotion, having children, saving some money, retiring, this and that. Life is far more important than these mundane, minute, nonsensical things. We have made them the most important thing. Through society and through media, we have made jobs and marriage and children and uh, earning wealth the most important things. And we lost the most important things which is to understand our own self, which is to understand the essence of love. So please, when you, you know, especially with me, please don't ask me for horoscope matching. I will not do it. That's, that's, that's actually one of the main messages here. I cannot do, but, but you know, um, the, the, one of the best ways to just do the most easiest compatibility you know, just to know that, okay, this person will impact this part of my life. Just do um, interlacing of the horoscopes. That's it. Do the interlacing of Navamsha. Do the interlacing of the birth chart. That's it. So if you marry somebody, let's say, and you're, you can't have children with them, well, that's the greatest thing that the universe is giving you because you must have done something to this person where they probably wanted children from you or you know whatever happened maybe this person that you're trying to marry was pregnant you got into an accident with them because you were drunk their baby died and all of that now maybe six lifetimes later you're coming to marry them be falling in love with them and talking about having children but that person will not be able to give you children because of what happened that's how deep that's how complicated this theory of karma is so before you run for horoscope matching, just, just think twice that am I escaping my karma or am I changing my karma? Can I change my karma? So go to an expert. Okay, I'm not an expert in horoscope matching. And neither I want to be. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not God. I'm not somebody who's here to decide who you should love or not. You already know how you should love and what love is. Love is not looking at some computer and deciding. Love is when you see the person and you know you're in love, you're in love. That's love. That is the best horoscope matching.